Hello, my Saab friends. This is my 2008 Saab 93 project car. And today, we are going to be doing what, Prudence? No, we are not going to be napping. We are actually going to be starting today off by pulling the wheels and tires off. I'm going to be putting some tires on here. Um, well, let me show you the situation. Oh, sneak across here. Yeah, this. So it has a donut tire on the front driver's side. The back driver, very low on air. This one, not bad. Back one, also not bad. That's the one that goes on the driver's side. And all of the tires basically look like this. So it's weird. It's got this like rippling up here. And then there was some pretty bad dry rot somewhere. Hmm. Right there. Yep. That is sketchy AF. So I know the other tires are pretty well dry rotted and regardless of tread wear, those being in decent shape, they gotta go. So I'm gonna get all four new tires and then I'll probably mess around with a couple different things in this video, get things buttoned up. That way I can tow the vehicle to my buddy's house so he can look more into the engine and hopefully bigger and better things to come from there. But today we are gonna start off with pulling these wheels and tires. And if you're asking about rims, these are 17s. I plan to keep them for now. Actually, I do like these styles. I wish they were an 18. It's kind of a unique look. But I may end up swapping them out. But for now, these are the wheels I have. I don't have any extra spare wheels. So I'm going to utilize what I have, get the tires for it, and then go from there. Clearly, this car needs some brake work. Passenger front coil is not broken, which is good. Brakes are not gouged, which is really good. Pads have good life to them. The car was definitely sitting for some time, so I believe this is just some surface rust. Can't really tell on the back side. Suspension wise, everything seems in decent shape. Go ahead, pull off that next wheel. Tell you what, good help is hard to come by. And here is the passenger rear. This one, again, surface rust. This one is worse off than the front. And pads. Not terrible, but could probably use changed. Then another sign of the car sitting. All this crap here. It's like factory springs, 
Everything seems all here. And they've cleaned up a little bit. But overall, not terrible. Of work so I figured at this point I might as well just take off the donut tire put it back in the trunk and be done with it that way when the tires are done mounted and balanced I can just come back throw them on lift the car up remove the jack stands and drop it back to the ground but in the meantime I'm getting my work out of So the driver's side is pretty much the same. No gouging, just surface rust from sitting. And more cobwebs and crusty crust on the back. This rotor by far is the worst. Looks real oxidized. Here's the original donut. There's my lazy assistants. And here are all four dry rotted and well used tires. This one basically has some real bad cupping on the inside of the tire, so the rear alignment is definitely out of whack. So once I get the tires replaced, get the engine back up and running, get this thing mobile and moving on its own power, I'll definitely need to send it off to the alignment shop. A few moments later. Just got the tires back from my local tire shop. Picked up some Pirelli Centurado P7s. Probably butchered that name. I'm normally quite honestly not a Pirelli person, but my local tire shop had an awesome deal on the set of four of them, Mountain Balance. Got it for dirt cheap, so I figured, well, I'll give it a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead, throw them back in the car. Here's the rear right door that needs a little bit of work. And now why I say that, it basically just needs a tension. So first things first, the window regulator doesn't work. Makes little crunchy crunch sounds. It's no bueno. The key, when locked, this right rear door doesn't do anything. I'll try to unlock it. Nothing. Lock it again, wait for it. That's loud. Not only is this not moving, but the actual door lock actuator within there, that is not working either. So what I heard you can try to do is to move this up multiple times Man, this little thing is hard to hold on to. Okay, Let's see what happens. Try this. Nope. 
No dice. Well, that's a bummer. So, I guess now we pull off the door panel. And I was going to anyways to replace this window regulator, but I just wanted to see if that would kind of work first. And obviously once I pull this door panel off and that foam covering, I'll be able to see the linkage, but I can hear the linkage moving all the way down into this section where it connects to, because there's a little bracket or like a bar that comes down. Then I think it's like a 90 degree piece and then a cable that runs all the way to this door lock actuator system there in that bottom corner. So it's definitely connected, whether it's you know connected from the end of that cable to the actuator, that I don't know. So pulling off this stuff, I'll be able to determine that. And if it's not, then maybe I can replace a clip. I don't necessarily know, but more than likely, I'm assuming I need to replace that door lock actuator. But we don't know 100% till I tear into it. So without further ado, let's dig into it. This little guy, it will tear your fingers up. It is tricky. So what I do is I kind of get in behind here, underneath, and lift up, and it releases this portion. Get a trim removal tool, and then just kind of work your way up, and it pops off. Getting it back on, that's a different story. So what that does is it gives you access to the two T25 torque screws behind here. Now if you're like myself, you don't have a torque screwdriver. So what you can do is get a flathead, the T25 Torx, put it in behind here, and get it out like that. Or if you have a quarter inch extension or enough of them, you can get in here, but I don't. So this method works perfectly fine. Just like that. This is loosened up. Now you need your trim removal tool. Just kind of work your way around the bottom. Then you can lift up to clear the door lock portion. And then lower the door down a little bit. That is the cable for the door lock. We have a green connector. That you'll lift up on this tab, releases that. Releasing the door switch, you can release the entire unit by getting a trim removal tool in here, in the back. So there's two tabs right here and here. This front piece, which I guess is also a tab. So three tabs, four tabs total with this back one, but the back one, you don't want to push too much on it. Otherwise you'll break it. But that is pretty much it. So looks like this one and this one. This one I broke, which isn't a big deal because it's the middle one. You can swap them out and it's real easy to move them if they're broke like that uh, this one is not broke but it's still in there so I'll probably try to remove that and this gives us access to the innards of the door to a certain extent you have this foam piece that we need to get off quite honestly I don't think there's a good way of going about taking this off Whatever, whatever method you choose, it's probably still going to break. So this is already broken. Somebody's been in here. So it's like RTV'd around.
Well, definitely made it worse on that one. To remove this it's actually quite easy just push it down but obviously as you saw mine just kind of fell out almost have just enough access to get to the window regulator I'll tell you what, this foam piece, this thing is brittle. For starters, we'll take out the two 10 mil bolts for the window portion of it. Um, another 10 mil bolt right here what actually holds in the assembly of the window regulator whereas the past two bolts that we took out that's what holds the actual window glass in another 10 mil here Careful removing this one because if you drop it, it doesn't have far to go, but it will actually fall inside this door. So you'll need like a magnetic tool. Really annoying if you drop it down in there. So just be careful whenever you remove it. At this point, you have access to the last remaining 10 mil. Broke. Looks like the actual cable itself broke. So here's the replacement that I got from the junkyard. And it's reverse order. So now I'm not able to access the two screws to re-secure the window to position that the window regulator, whenever I pulled it out, I wasn't able to lower it. So now that everything's hooked up, if this works correctly, I should be able to lower it just a little bit, probably to here, and then manually move the window down to get access to hook up those other two 10 mil bolts. So that's it. So let me go ahead and test the window regulator, make sure it works. So the auto down works still. Try this switch. Good deal. So, before I put all of this back together, 
I'm going to take a look and see what I can find out with the door lock. If you remember correctly, I am having an issue with this rear lock. And for whatever reason, I can hear the motor, but it's not actually doing anything. So everything's hooked up minus the speaker. And because it's all torn apart, I figured it's just easier to kind of poke around a little bit. Now, I don't have enough time today to actually tear into it and replace it if it is the door lock actuator but at least hopefully right now I can determine if that is in fact the issue. So I definitely hear something going on in here. Yeah, I think internally something is going on with that door lock actuator. Yeah, because none of the mechanisms outside of it that are hooked into the door lock actuator, none of them are moving. The cable itself is not moving. If I move it, it doesn't make a difference whether I lock it, unlock it. It definitely sounds like it's jammed up. So that's a very common thing for the rear doors on any Saab 93 sports sedan, regardless of the year 2003 to 2011, 2012, very common. Not a fun thing to change out, I believe. This window either has to come out again, and then this quarter window, and then somehow shift it because there's a track, not only with the window regulator, but that is easily removed, as you saw. But there's a track in behind here that this portion of the glass rides along. So that needs removed because you have this big honking door lock actuator that you need to shimmy out. Not a fun job. Kind of put things in perspective. Obviously here is the door. I'll put you inside. That is the channel that I was talking about. This piece that comes all the way down. That the window rides in have to see but this is the linkage that goes from the outside door handle to the door lock actuator and if I press this button to unlock it making noise but nothing is happening and you can probably hear it doing something or at least trying but it just sounds like it's trying to move but there's something blocking it so again very common issue on these so what I would say would be we do in fact need a right rear door lock actuator. I do have a lead on one in the junkyard. I did pull some parts for this car from that one in the junkyard. I know it has the right rear door lock actuator. Whether I'm able to test it in the yard, that I'm not sure. I know for a fact the car does not have a key, but if enough stuff is attached, I'm able to hook a 12 volt source to it. I may be able to use the lock button on the door itself. So. I'll see what I can find out with that. Hopefully I have a replacement. If not, I'll try Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, something along those lines. But at least for now, I can manually lock and unlock it, not have to worry about it. But the main concern was this window being down. So let's go ahead, put this all back together. Might not be pretty, but at least it'll all be here. So let's fish this through this busted up foam piece. I certainly did a number on it. And intentionally. Okay, the window switches in. Now, don't want to forget my door lock arm. So now, I speak from experience when I say this, but do not forget your clip for the cable of the door handle on the inside. So this one right here, on my 0793 that I had, I actually went through the trouble, had to replace both rear window regulators, 
And whenever I put the passenger door handle back in, I forgot to clip that line back in. Lo and behold, I didn't notice for probably half a year, had a friend in the back seat and couldn't get out. It's kind of funny because I thought it was the child lock, but uh, once we turned the little child lock off, realized no matter what I did, that didn't work. I feel like the most tricky bit about this disassembly and reassembly is this cover right here. This is such a nightmare to get on, but basically you have this little tab right here and then it's just held in with pressure. So to start, you want to put that tab in. Then you just use force. There it is. So we'll double check to make sure this works before we call it a day. And hopefully it's been a successful day. Master switch on the driver's side works. And this one appears to work as well. Good deal. I would call that a success. So that window regulator and a whole slew of other random bits and pieces, the impact sensors that I previously replaced, some of the connectors that I used to replace, this piece that I still need to install up on the top, and a whole bunch of other parts, including the battery I got for under hundred bucks so I'm looking forward to getting the door lock actuator that should be relatively cheap hopefully it works because that's a ton of work to replace but we're slowly getting there so now we're at the stage where the car is pretty much all here obviously there's a bunch of little things to continue on to but my main concern was the tires they were super duper dry rotted getting rid of some of those lights getting the bumper in working order and especially the brakes with that pump after fixing that probably a week ago that light has not come back on that connectors fixed this leads us to the number one issue with this car which is the engine and again needs a head gasket or a replacement altogether but we're at least now at the stage where I can tow it off to my buddy's house. If it has to sit outside, so be it. I'll have him take a look at it. He'll let me know what is going on. He'll pull the heads off. He'll send them to his machine shop. He'll do a little more inspection. And then he'll let me know whether it's worth getting the heads machined or if they're cracked. Not even worry about a replacement and then sourcing a replacement junkyard motor. So I think we've made good headway. There's a long way to go. And obviously once the engine gets up and running, the car becomes mobile, we can then test the brakes, suspension, clutch, so on and so forth. So I think we're in a good spot. So with that, it's been a busy day. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, be sure to drop a comment down below. And I'll catch you guys next time. And before you go, remember, Pruy gets more belly rubs for more likes and subs. So... Let's go find her. Oh, there she is. Prudence. Sit. Sit. Ah, oh, there you go. Looks like you have a cape going on here. Just think, Prudence. More subscribers, more belly rubs you get. All right, I appreciate you guys and gals watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.